Antarctica is not only the coldest continent, but has the most secrets. Previous studies have indicated that the aquatic depths beneath the Antarctic ice shelves are too cold and nutrient depleted to support much life. But Elon Musk has unveiled a new study that challenges scholars' idea of the existence of life in harsh conditions by revealing the discovery of an animal colony on the sea floor. What exactly did researchers discover in the ocean's depths? And why are scientists bothered by this breathtaking discovery? Let's find out together. According to historical records, humans have been exploring the northern extremities since 325 BC, when the ancient Greek sailor Pythias encountered a frozen sea while looking for a source of the metal tin. Dangerous oceans and poor weather conditions frequently stymie explorers' attempts to reach the polar regions, and traversing these hazards by flight, boat, and foot have proven challenging. The American submarine, the USS Nautilus, SSN-571, reached the North Pole without surfacing on August 3, 1958. It then traveled beneath the entire polar ice cap. Its mission opened up an entirely new universe for scientists to investigate. Since 1969, the United Kingdom has kept at least one nuclear-armed submarine at sea. Throughout the expedition, the scientists took measurements of the water's temperature, salinity, and depth. Also, the Navy and scientists get fresh insights into the Arctic Ocean and the environment in which they operate. The southern continent has also produced a considerable number of scientific breakthroughs. Because of its isolation and harsh climate, there's still a treasury of strange and unique creatures beneath the ice and seas just waiting to be uncovered. Nothing comes easy when you're bivouacked amid the Filchner Ron ice shelf, a five-hour flight from the nearest Antarctic station. Even though it was the southern summer, British Antarctic Survey geologist James Smith survived over three months of frigid weather, sleeping in a tent and eating dehydrated food. The science itself was complicated. He needed seafloor material, which was trapped behind a half mile of ice to examine the history of the floating shelf. Smith and all his colleagues had to melt 20 tons of snow to make 20,000 liters of hot water, which they then pushed down a borehole through a conduit. It took them 20 hours to slowly melt through the ice eventually penetrating the shelf. They then lowered an apparatus to gather sediment and a GoPro camera. However, the collector returned empty-handed. They attempted once more. Still nothing. Nothing is easy in this world. Each round trip of the instrument took an hour. In his tent, Smith watched the video later that night and noticed an obvious flaw. The video depicts a plunge through 3,000 feet of blue-green ice that abruptly ends, revealing dark salt water. The camera continues to travel for another 1,600 feet until the seafloor is visible, mostly light-colored dirt, which Smith was looking for, but also something dark. That black item turned out to be a boulder, which the camera thuds into before falling face down into the sediment. The camera instantly corrects itself and scans the rock, uncovering something the geologists were not looking for. In reality, it was something implausible, life. Smith exclaims, it's only one large boulder in the middle of a flat seafloor. It's not like the seafloor is covered in these things. It was just his bad luck to drill in the wrong area, the wrong place to collect seafloor muck, but the perfect one for a one in a million chance of discovering life in an environment scientists thought could only support a little of it. Smith is not a biologist, but his British Antarctic Survey colleague, Hugh Griffiths is. When Griffiths returned to the UK, he found a coating on the rock, most likely a layer of bacteria widely known as a microbial mat. A stalked animal and an alien-like sponge dangled from the rock, while stouter cylindrical sponges clutched the surface. The rock was also laced with wispy filaments, which could be bacterial mats or a strange critter known as a hydroid. Smith's unintentionally discovered rock is 160 miles from the nearest edge of the shelf when ice finishes and the open ocean begins. It's hundreds of miles away from the most immediate possible food source, a region with enough sunshine to power an ecosystem, and in an appropriate position relative to the rock for known currents to feed these organisms. It's not my place to tell life what to do, yet it has no right to be here. It's not the most exciting looking rock. If you don't know where it is, said Griffiths, lead author of the recent Frontiers in Marine Science Research, because you now know, your jaw is probably somewhere near the floor. We can be positive that these species live in complete darkness, which is fine. Many deep sea creatures do. 
However, creatures that live sessile lives on the deep sea floor must rely on somewhat consistent sources of food in the form of marine snow. Every living thing in the water column above must die at some point, and when they do, they descend to the bottom. Other organisms nibble at the bodies and toss off particles, tiny morsels that amass even on the lowest sea floors as they drop and disintegrate. By the way, when a whale dies and sinks, it's referred to as a whale fall. This is effective in most sections of Antarctica, where the waters are incredibly productive. Plankton are microscopic organisms that feed all types of fish, feeding giant marine mammals such as seals as well. This activity generates trash, including dead creatures, which eventually becomes marine snow. However, the Antarctic animals on this specific rock do not reside beneath the teeming water column. They dwell beneath a half mile of ice, and they can't leave their rock in quest of nourishment. The worst thing in a place where there's not much food, and it's very sporadic, is to be something that's glued to a spot, Griffiths adds. So where are they going to obtain their food? The researchers believe that the drift of this marine snow has been tipped on its side, causing the food source to move horizontally rather than vertically. Looking at current charts around the drill location, the researchers discovered fruitful zones between 390 and 930 kilometers distant. It may not be much, but enough organic material may ride these currents for hundreds of miles to nourish these organisms. That's an incredible distance, considering the marine snow formed at the surface must plummet seven miles down to reach the seafloor in the lowest section of the ocean, the Challenger Deep near Guam. Food would have to travel up to 133 times that distance to reach the creatures on this Antarctic rock, and it would have to do so by floating sideways. This isn't particularly far-fetched, according to Rich Mui, curator of invertebrate zoology and geology at the California Academy of Sciences, who has studied Antarctic sea life but was not involved in this new experiment, given what scientists know about currents encircling Antarctica. Something has to fill the void as the water flows forth, Mui says. There's going to be some inflow to replace that, and that inflow, even over hundreds of kilometers, will carry organic matter. This will provide food for our life forms trapped under that boulder. The currents may also introduce new animals to the rock's population. However, because the researchers could not gather specimens, they could not speculate on what these sponges and other animals may be eating. Some sponges filter organic waste from the water, while others are carnivorous and feed on small creatures. Griffiths and his colleagues can't say how old these animals are because they don't have specimens. Antarctic sponges have been known to live for thousands of years. Thus, this could be an ancient ecology. Perhaps the rock was seeded with life long ago, but currents have replenished it with new life over the millennia. Elon Musk and the experts are also still determining whether this rock is an exception, or if similar ecosystems are typical beneath the ice. Perhaps the geologists weren't just unlucky when they dropped their cameras upon the rock. Perhaps these animal populations are a common seafloor feature beneath Antarctica's ice shelves. Such ecosystems would most likely have a lot of room. The floating ice shelves cover an area of 560,000 square kilometers. Despite this, earlier boreholes have only investigated a region underneath them the size of a tennis court. So they could be in large numbers. We have yet to find them. The rock may be hidden beneath a half mile of ice, but that ice is becoming increasingly vulnerable as the world warms. Using a giant hot water drill, researchers discovered a never before seen ecosystem lurking in an underground river, deep beneath the ice surface of the Larsen Ice Shelf. The hidden habitat is located in a vast chamber 1,640 feet or 500 meters below the ice surface. The underground structure was discovered after researchers saw an unusual groove in a satellite photograph of the ice sheet. Still, they never expected to find anything within when they eventually drilled down to explore it. Instead, the team discovered thousands of amphipods, which had them jumping up and down for joy. However, a new map of the Southern Ocean provides geologists with the most precise depiction of the seafloor surrounding Antarctica to date, including the Factorian Deep. The Factorian Deep was discovered in 2019 at approximately 24,400 feet or 7,437 meters below the sea surface, or 17 Empire State Buildings stacked top to bottom. However, experts had no idea how it matched with the surrounding sea floor until now. The new image is based on more than 1,200 sonar data tests, most of which were gathered by science vessels and spans an area of more than 18.5 million square miles.
or 48 million square kilometers, of the seafloor. Researchers will use the seafloor chart to identify underwater mountains or seamounts that may be hotspots for marine life. Furthermore, while taking routine bottom sediment samples in the Scotia Sea, researchers unintentionally discovered DNA from ancient bacteria, some of which are approximately one million years old. The ancient genetic material was recovered from depths of up to 584 feet, or 178 meters beneath the sea floor, and dates back between 1 million and 540,000 years. Scientists aren't sure whose species the oldest DNA samples belong to, but the most recent samples are believed to be diatoms, a type of phytoplankton. The diatoms date back to a prehistoric age of global warming and may provide insight into how Antarctica's marine ecosystems will respond to human-caused climate change. Underwater robots peering beneath Antarctica's Thwaites Glacier, dubbed the Doomsday Glacier, discovered that it's clinging to the sea floor by its fingernails. Its demise may happen sooner than predicted due to rapid mobility and an enormous rise in ice loss once it detaches. A new depiction of the seafloor encircling the icy giant showed the glacier's parallel grooves as it scraped along the ocean floor during previously unknown phases of fast retreat over the last few centuries. Researchers warned that excessive warmth caused by climate change could trigger this type of rapid melting again. Thanks for watching. Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.